Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about common stand throw mistakes and training mistakes. Are you doing these couple of things? Let's take a look at this video and check it out. Everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, what we're going to talk about is the stand throw. And one of the key things that we want to do is understand that there's a lot of things happening. We call this pillar five six, and that's where we're creating basically the power position and moving properly into delivery. Now, the reason we break it into two pillars is because we are looking at how we sequence the delivery side, the angles we set up, and how we engage the block leg and the block arm. So when we look at this video, this is one of our athletes that had been having some trouble for a while. So you look at his block leg, his delivery leg, his block arm, and you're going to see the discus, right? So as he winds up, so we're going to set it and you're going to see, watch, pay attention to the path of all these things. So one of the things we talk about is setting the proper angle. Some people say stand on one leg, and I don't disagree with that. I think that that's a good cue, but we also want to make sure that we're creating an angle and then what we refer to as creating a stack and that stack is going to be set here so we want foot knee hip and chest now there's going to be some degree of a peered bend at the waist but one of the key things we're going to be looking at is when we set that angle you have to understand how to counterbalance over the axis right so by creating this long extended leg on the block and creating the nice long path here and creating obviously what we want is a nice high point in the discus so that we're gonna be able to move that discus out and around and then through and out into the throw. So if you kind of notice what I'm talking about is this is the mistake that we see most often. So many young throwers are basically not setting up the angles. So here we'll take a look at what we see are what is the most common. This is gonna be a new athlete that just entered our program. This is his first day and we're kind of evaluating and let him go and seeing what he does. Now what he does here is really common. This is nothing super unique. I see this all the time and what you're gonna notice is compared to what we were just looking at, you're gonna see that there's no angle, there's no stretch, right? And you're gonna see that that discus is at a low point. So what that does is that creates that red vertical line, right? So we're gonna talk about the lines here instead of being on a nice counterbalanced big long angle where we're gonna set up and we're gonna be able to work around and straighten up that line into delivery. But if it starts here, it's gonna go past what I mean by that is it's gonna go forward, you're going to go past the axis and you're gonna see that this thrower is already losing the right leg. Now, he has a pretty good feel and I like the way this athlete's moving and I'm encouraged to see what we're gonna do over the next several months. But one of the core things that we talked about right after we filmed this was looking at the orbit, the fundamentals, right? No high point, no load over the right leg, the knees in front and the hips are shifting forward. And so that discus is gonna be low and you're gonna see that he's like blocking off of his heel, trying to reverse. The angle of the discus is wrong. The block leg is okay. The block arm is naturally relatively good, but he doesn't understand the concept of setting the angle, setting the stack and being able to move around and create that right sequence. So as we start to train these things, which we'll do through drills and progressions and wall throws like you're looking at, then we're gonna see a big improvement and that is gonna be carrying over into the throw because if you're doing things like this, in your in your stand throw chances are you're going to be carrying a lot of this movement over into your full throw and if you finish a full throw when there's more speed moving into this position it's going to be very inefficient and there will be a lot less distance gained on the full throw so to conclude here what we want to do is again keep things simple the idea here especially when we talk about the throwing chain reaction is always that we're looking at simplifying and understanding what actions cause the proper reactions or improper reactions so with this case you're going to notice again watch Robert now he's starting on a little bit of an angle but the key thing that we're gonna really focus on is creating that counterbalance now some guys will start we recommend not starting with the foot on the ground and bringing it to the ground because it helps you to establish this angle so you're gonna look at again you'll see we have that high point we have the nice counterbalance so we have this counterbalance system between the left leg and the left arm that's gonna help set him up here as he comes around, it can come down. We're gonna keep that discus in the high point. We're gonna be able to start engaging the block, 
that's going to help extend and he's going to be able to move the right side quick we want a little bit more push in the knee and the hip but we're keeping a pretty nice delivery radius he's keeping that discus away from him the block arm has a nice stop position the block leg has a nice stop position the delivery leg and the hips are facing the throw and that's going to allow him to feel a better whip on the discus and it's going to come through and get that and you're going to see that was the big difference so remember set your angle set that stack so that you're going to be able to initiate moving the delivery side quickly engage the block fast and that is what's going to help translate on your training throws into the wall or in the field and that's going to have much better carryover into the discus into your full throw the same will apply to the shot and we'll do that in another video so hopefully you find this helpful some simple tips to help you improve your training if you like this video be sure to give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next video what we want to see is that arm kind of opening this way and it kind of opened around too much so it's a little short but here's again where we see this